Welcome to LA Foodie. I'm Drew Hubbard with Ben Waters. We're looking for the best food in Los Angeles and usually finding it. On today's show, we're going to talk about what happens when a wheat thin impregnates a combo, why we love Father's Office in Culver City, but why it pisses us off every time we go there, and of course, this week's restaurant review, J&J Burger and Barbecue, the best barbecue on the west side that you may have mistaken for a place that just sells firewood. Also this week, since we're in Culver City, we'll talk about the Culver City Farmer's Market and why it's growing in popularity. Appetite whetted yet? Because there's all that and more coming up on L.A. Foodie. <laughs> So uh, I went up to Sonoma Valley, I guess it was a week ago, or two weeks ago now, with uh, my wife's parents and my wife, and... Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. First, we should introduce our illustrious guests. Oh, of course, of yes. course. Uh, joining us today is... Uh, I'm Jimmy Callahan, a very semi-successful uh, commercial actor. <laughs> very semi-successful. That's, and yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what, what will people have seen you from? Is there, what's recognizable? Uh, well, currently there's a bunch of national commercials. There's a, a Bud Light commercial, um, and so when we were walking down the, uh, uh, you know, I'm a beer vendor. Beer yeah. vendor. Uh, yeah. I was yeah. in a, a direct TV, direct TV campaign with Alex Trebek last year, uh, and then coming up, I'm going to have a commercial with Flo from the Progressive campaign, Ooh. in which there's a dream sequence, and we're in love. Oh man, it's very nice. So, Jim looks like a cross between. Oh, don't do. It. <laughs> uh, I, I, well, I, I have um, n basically whenever anybody says, "Oh, you know who you look like to me," it's going to be an insult. Um, <laughs> so, who have you gotten? Uh, who have I gotten? Well, yeah. Like some, like some assholes have said uh, Seth Rogen, and uh, some people have said, but <laughs> basically, pe any, people say somebody who they know who has red hair, yes. and. It'll be like, dude, you, you remind me of Jim Gaffigan. Oh, really? Because I'm like 47 years old and bald, and I, <laughs> I have more black. Because I, because that guy doesn't even have any hair anymore, you know. And so it's just absolutely ridiculous. But uh, you can check out my website at jimmycallahan.com. Oh, nice there plug. you go. Yeah. So back to Sonoma. And, Sean. and? oh, Sean yes. Callahan, of course. I really want to tell this brother. Sonoma I'm just story. That guy's <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell my Sonoma oh, story? Oh, you can yeah. finally tell your Sonoma story now that we've gotten business. Okay. <laughs> so Sonoma Valley, of course, is one of uh, many California destinations. It's a wine destination, and uh, I don't drink wine. I, are you a wine drinker, Ben? I mean, I've been known to partake, but, yeah. you know, after a particularly bad too-much-wine experience, because the, the wine hangover... That's 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 a tough one. Well, that's everybody always says, you know, if you don't like wine, you just haven't found one that's right for you yet. And I guess I don't buy that because I've been trying wines for like, you know, 20 years or 15 years or however yeah. long it's been. And I still haven't found and I've had really good wines, but I just never found one that I like. So uh, I used my time in Sonoma to uh, sample some of the beers that are up there. And, and there's some pretty great stuff up there, uh, including um, one of my former favorites, Russian River, which left a bad oh, taste right. in my mouth. Had a bad right. experience there. You can read about it on the LA Foodie blog. But also um, got to try Bear Republic, who they make Racer 5 IPA, which is my new favorite beer. My old favorite uh -huh. beer was a Russian River beer. It's not anymore, but <laughs> now, <laughs> now Racer 5 is my new favorite. And there's one other up there that... Yeah, Lagunitas is up there, and, I, and we went to their tap room, and that was really, really cool. So anyway, if, you take, if you've got friends or family planning a trip to Sonoma, um, go with them, even if you're not a, a wine drinker, because there's really awesome beer up there. And if you're a beer drinker, go to Sonoma for the beer, because you can do a day or two, brewery tours, tasting, stuff like that. It's pretty awesome. That sounds like a good time. Yeah, this is not what I would expect. No, no, going no. To wine I, country. There, yeah. There's, a, there's also Moylins is up there, and uh, like five or six other microbrews like all around the San Francisco area that are that are really excellent. What's um, Moylins? Uh, Moylins, um, they they make a variety of beers. Uh, you can find uh, their stuff at um, at Bevmo. It? M O Y L A N. Pastor Yes. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, but yeah, they're 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 a great microbrew. They they make uh, some some good ones. Sean, you've had like the Kilt Lifter is a good like Scottish ale. Oh, I've had uh, They've before. got they've got some good IPAs and stuff. Pale ales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is it a hopsicle? Um, oh, they make hopsicle. Or, is or it hop hops stupid? No, that's it's it's a hop guy. Whatever. Gotcha. But uh, but they they had they're a uh, um, you know a California microbrew and there's there's a couple other ones up there too besides Lagunitas. But it's um, there's some good beer up there. All right, check this segue out. 
Oh, yeah. You know what else is great up there? What's that? Farmer's markets and produce. Oh, yes. Especially. Which, yeah. The Brussels sprouts. That's right. Yeah. No, I was, I was going to bring up the Brussels sprouts that you made the other night when we were over here. Because I've... I don't know if I've ever even had Brussels sprouts before. Yeah, my wife would tell stories yeah, yeah, about the the frozen Brussels sprouts in the bag that you would boil or, yeah. heaven forbid, canned Brussels sprouts. Mm. So no wonder an entire generation of people thinks that it's just this well, it's, disgusting food, but it's really boiling, not. Yeah, because I mean, once you, because you, what, so what did you do to them? You, you put them on the grill and you had some kind of oil on them or something. I don't know, because it tastes, they were. Awesome. Well, that's the thing is that Brussels sprouts, when they're picked, it's actually a really delicious food. And if you do virtually nothing to them, and when we cooked them, I just did olive oil, salt, salt, pepper, and a little bit of sugar to help them caramelize. And then you just throw them on a hot grill, char the outside and the inside, steam themselves when they're on the grill. And that's it. I mean, just like a couple of minutes on the grill. And I've been serving those just at barbecues and stuff for, I don't know, like a year or something. And so whenever a new person comes to the barbecue, I always get that same response, which is, oh my God, what is this a Brussels sprout? This is amazing. And Brussels sprouts, surprise, are actually really good. So, you know, give Brussels sprouts another chance. I think that's all we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to do it the right way. Yeah. The same thing for us. Uh, growing up in a family of seven, uh, there was a lot of, you know, meat and potatoes and then just stews and a lot of boiling and a lot mm -hmm. of steaming, but not done properly. Uh, God, you know, God help my mom. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> But Brussels sprouts and asparagus, like two foods that I, as a child, was like, this is absolutely disgusting. But now it's like if you if you uh, you know roast the Brussels sprouts or grill them or you know for asparagus the same thing, um, you know letting the natural flavors come out and not just com completely depleting them of flavor. Uh, I love both of them, and you can't beat asparagus pee. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's true and disgusting. It's a nice. It's a nice little surprise later when you're like, "What the? Oh yeah, yeah, right. The yeah, worst, the asparagus. The very worst. <laughs> Have you ever gone out drinking and eaten asparagus, and the next morning you wake up with a terrible hangover, <laughs> and the first pee of the day is like, oh, oh, oh my god. It's like, or, or 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 also beets. Like uh, my wife roasted. Beets. Oh yes. And and roasted beets is they're just I love them. Yeah, and awesome. um, like a little uh, apple cider vinegar over it, it's just great. But if you don't remember that you either ate Brussels or ate asparagus or beets, and then all of a sudden your pee is like you know pink and smelly, you're like I have cancer. Yeah. Like I, I'm just like bleeding from my penis right now. No, no just beets. It's great. If you find that you're possibly peeing blood <laughs> look at what you ate last night just right. first look and make sure were they red beets were there red beets yeah but. <laughs> and, then, and we've got kind of a culver city theme going to uh today's show mm -hmm. and uh, actually uh, where i buy all of my brussels sprouts asparagus beets etc is the downtown culver city farmers market which is great it's on tuesdays i don't remember the hours but i think it's two, new to seven. two to seven two to seven okay to seven. it's right downtown on main street well, let's talk about Check that when we get to that. Coming segment. up, yeah. That, yeah so coming, coming up, up, we'll talk more about the farmer's market. That'll be exciting. But now, let's do some free samples. <laughs> this is the part of the show where we try stuff that people sent us, uh, and we review it live right now. Today, we try the Wheat Thins Crunch Sticks, and uh, I know you're pretty excited about what the stuff that they, they were doing with social media all the yeah. little videos they had they're I, pretty funny I like uh, it's just cool i mean i like to see a brand that's embracing social media and actually doing something with it not just like using social media as an advertising channel but right. that instead they're like engaging with people i always think that's cool and they've had a campaign i think it's called crunch is calling yeah. um, and they they actually hit up la foodie probably a couple of months ago and sent us some stuff and you know i'm not a huge snack food packaged snack foods guy um, we tried them out and they were pretty good and you know we tweeted some stuff out on la foodie and i think i think there was even a blog post about it um, where we kind of said hey you know this is kind of cool but yeah We've stayed in touch with Wheat Thins, and so they actually they sent us some new stuff. So what did they send? Well, they've sent us two boxes here of Wheat Thins sticks. That's um, S-T-I-X. Yes, S-T-I-X. Yes, uh, that's the plural. I think the singular is S-T-I-K. That's uh -huh. what I decided. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we have chipotle pepper, and we have cinnamon kick. Uh, so now I guess... We can pass this around. Let's all, right, all try we, a little chipotle pepper. chipotle pepper. Let's pepper. start with chipotle pepper. All it's right. the salty of the two. Everybody have a little, uh, little munch here. All right, that's um, 
That's pretty good, actually. Again, I'm not a huge packaged snacks guy. Yeah. Well, it kind of reminds me of uh, you know going to an Italian restaurant and those little like hard breadsticks that they have on the table. Yeah. yeah. But these are a little bit more. Um, they're not as dry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, has some more flavor. Um, they don't taste as processed as I thought they would. They taste pretty processed. Well, I mean, like no, I mean, like <laughs> I I expected to uh, to not want to eat another one. I'm like, eh, I'll, I'll buy one more. You know. Yeah. But yeah, it's pretty processed. It's like you know what you'd expect. Shall we try the uh, the cinnamon kick? Sure, let's pass them out. Yeah. I, I think the chipotle pepper one reminds me a lot of uh, like what you get in like a party mix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cinnamon kick is a different story. Cinnamon kick. Yeah, that is a different story. Um, well, you were kick. Hang on. You were telling me before the show that yeah. you'd actually, you had tried one of these before. I did. And you were saying that it's not quite a dessert, and it's not quite a salty snack. It's really... And it resides somewhere in the middle of those two weird things, and middle that's area. not in a good way. Yeah, that's... I mean, I, I think it's not bad. It kind of reminds me of the cinnamon graham cracker. I was just about to say the same thing. Yeah. But but it, it's like the cinnamon graham cracker uh, dusting, yes. but on something that you wouldn't want it on. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite part about this food is not the actual food, but the packaging, where these Wheat Thin Sticks box... Uh, there's actually instructions on the side. Dive into the mighty crunch for easy snacking. Bend flaps down and squeeze the box open to, in effect, create a human horse trough yeah. to <laughs> eat into. Like it you, is a little it's, feed it's, bag. You it's can like, just strap like, it right on. You yeah. basically are able to stick your face in it oh, yeah. to That's just awesome. just munch on it. Bend flaps down and squeeze the box open. I did that in college. <laughs> well, now, now the opening is even wider. <laughs> So you can really get your right. whole face so in if, there. Yeah, if your wheat thin delivery system is insufficient, yes, yes, then, uh. then we would recommend <laughs> wheat thin sticks because it's like, have you noticed there's a trend in this, like uh, the beer cans with the carburetors on them? It's just, you know, when I'm drinking my natural light, I just can't get it in there fast yeah. enough. I, <laughs> yes. I need a the, carburetion. The extra system. little notch in there to get the yeah. air in faster. Well, we, 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 have, get it, we, have to, yeah. we have to get as drunk uh, and as fat as fast as possible. Oh, yeah. It's like, can yeah. I just like, can I just like, you know, through osmosis or something, like absorb the fat, you know? I, well, I don't think osmosis well, is That's what American right beer is all about, right? I yeah. mean, it's less filling. That's the whole point, is you don't want to get filled up when you're having 20 beers. I mean, yeah. like, you know, you got to... Instead of having, f like, four good beers. Yeah, no. Alcohol. I'm going to have a Guinness? Like, no, I won't be able to drink any more beer. All right, so, what, so, Bud Lights. So, so, back to <laughs> so back to the Wee Thin Sticks. So what are these good for? I mean, I, these well, are for our listeners that, that have the munchies, right? Well, yeah. No, I mean, definitely... And, well, I will point out that uh, Lisa, uh, my girlfriend, she is a nanny right now and she when she tried the cinnamon sticks was like oh kids will really like these cuz and I'm like oh yeah they are kind of that thing that you give to kids they're rounded and they're can hold them easily and kind of munch on them or whatever are you saying and that this is going to give the almighty cheerio a run for its money <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I mean I don't know I don't, I I can't cheerio I mean you could probably put it in the cheerio oh, even very actually good. there you go wow, yeah well, yeah. it, there's it's there's kind of like a safety factor with this one, whereas mm -hmm. in like the wheat thins regularly, there's like kind of a jagged edge it's if true. you're that poor at handling food. So like <laughs> this this you can kind of grab it and look with kids like maybe they won't like slice their hands open. Also, <laughs> like they normally do with wheat also thins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Along the lines of maximum wheat thin delivery, you could actually use the sticks as a tamping rod. So that you could load your face with wheat thin sticks <laughs> and then jam them down in there with another stick. Yes. So yes. children or gluttony, either yes. either way. Either way, either way. No, I, you know, and I, I, I kind of like the. All right. So we are we yeah. recommending these things? I think so. Yeah, I'm gonna out of like a hundred, I'd give them like a sixty or something. I, yeah. As a packaged snack food, I think that it's really not bad. Yeah, in that realm. Yeah, I definitely go. Yeah, like sixty. What do you What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's over fifty percent, but uh, nowhere nearing seventy. Uh, I mean, like, uh, so sixty. No, 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 I was saying more no, like I just did fifty, quick math for you. fifty-eight, something like that. Uh, no, I mean, like no. it, 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 you, you get you, you get what you expect. Uh, but yeah. I, I actually expect it to be worse. So yeah, sixty yeah. is fine. So, uh, hmm. so the big question is, is, is it going to last? I say no. I don't think this thing's going to stick around. I don't. Especially the cinnamon kick, I don't really get the niche for adults. For kids, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a good thing for kids. This but could like, end up being, yeah, a kid's. Because snack I think food. whenever, yeah, whenever adults eat it, 
I think they had the same response that I did, where it's kind of like, is this supposed to be a dessert or is this a snack food? I'm not really sure. So it's kind of in between. All right. So we say way thin sticks. Pretty okay. good. Pretty good. Okay. Yeah, not bad. Okay. Give them a try. Yeah. Give them a shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that takes us to hard to swallow. This is the part of the show where we talk about what's wrong with the hospitality industry and how they should fix it because, of course, we know everything. Obviously. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at Father's Office 2, the one over here in Culver City, and why it's awesome and why it makes me feel like an animal All right, so every time I'm there. Father's Office, uh, we're just going to refer to it as Father's Office from now on. I think its yeah. official name is Father's Office 2. It's the second location of the really popular burger joint that's been in Santa Monica for years uh, the Culver City location is technically larger, though one Correct. of our complaints is that it doesn't really use that space very well. Correct. Um, it's a little trendier. Uh, it's certainly built with kind of modern, you know, uh, blonde wood, uh, mm-hmm. modern fixtures, you know, in, in the bathroom. Uh, it's kind of this hipster feel yeah, with urinals. Yeah. <laughs> and, right. You know, the, the floor <laughs> to you know, uh, chest high urinals. So, right. there, I mean, it's got a lot of good stuff going for it. Um, probably. Well, and the burger. Yeah. The most of which the burger is the burger. It's amazing. Yeah. The it's, burger's it's, incredible. And if you've yeah. never had the father's office burger, you got to go over and try the burger cause it really is out of sight. But yeah. <clears throat> some of the things, oh, that, and the beer selection. Also. Oh, and the beer. We can't yeah, leave that how, out. How can you yeah. forget the beer? Uh, they have one of amazing. the very best beer selections in the entire city. Um, always have something interesting on tap and the, yeah. the knowledgeable staff, right? I mean, totally. Yeah, Ben, you were talking about this the other day, how, you, you know, these guys will yeah. make a recommendation. If I walk up there and say, oh, like, I love, like, an amber, like, fat tire is kind of one of my favorites. There's something in that realm. They'll be like, oh, yeah, we can try this. You can get a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they, they know what they're talking about. They're not, yeah, they're not screwing around. They, yeah, but, so, yeah. I mean, it's really good training. Obviously, they have their process down, mm-hmm. um, order expediting you know, that whole process does seem to work for them, but there are some pretty serious problems over there. Um, not the least of which is the seating problem. They, <sighs> one of the things that bugs me about places like this is when they become victims of their own popularity. It's great, right? Why wouldn't you want to go there? Sure. Uh, it's in my neighborhood. I can walk to it. So I, same with well, you. I, yeah. The, I would go there all the time were it not for... Well, the pro- yeah, the thing is, I don't mind that it's crowded. Sure, it's crowded. It's great. Why wouldn't it be crowded? Although... They should see if they can expand. I mean, I'm not even going to lie. Last A couple times ago when I was there, I actually looked at the Google Maps of it to see if there was anything on the roof. Because I'm like, they should just take over the damn roof and just put <laughs> seating up there, goddammit. Because, yeah. well, that's... Uh, so being crowded, I mean, that's fine. But the real problem is, in my mind, they have this thing where they kind of are very proud of their stubbornness. Yeah. And they're, they're like, we're not going to do certain things. We're not going to give you ketchup. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Like, yeah, if you well, want to, you, if you're like, my food is, this food is best eaten without ketchup, even though you would normally eat it. You know, I'm willing to trust you because you guys are good. I have mixed feelings on that because I, I agree with you, actually. I think the no ketchup thing on the burger, of course, they say that it's better that way. Yeah. But some people like ketchup. Are um, you really going to tell somebody that they can't have ketchup? They won't serve ketchup with their they french fries. Either. They won't. No. So. Yeah. Right? They, they, yeah, I don't think they have it no, at all. No, yeah. they, they don't. And uh, that's one of my biggest pet peeves, uh, besides the phrase pet peeve, <clears> which I think <laughs> uh, that phrase alone just sounds so stupid. But uh, the, one of my number one complaints about Father's Office and, and any place that doesn't you know serve ketchup is that fries need ketchup. Ketchup and fries, I, ha- I need a pool of ketchup. I don't give a crap uh, you know, if you don't like ketchup or whatever, but there are uh, legions of people who... That that is a marriage that you that cannot that is bound by God and <laughs> you cannot break. You know what is bound by the Lord shall never be broken between ketchup and fries. Yeah, I, I understand. I that. believe that. What's the chapter and verse? Oh, uh, that is no. Leviticus. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but but my other issue though, the real problem is every time I've been there, you have to vulture everyone at yeah. the place for a seat because yeah. they don't. Yeah, they will not do seating stuff. And it would be so easy if they would just do the stupid, I know it's lame, but do the thing where you get the little light-up coaster and you go stand outside. If I'm standing out there with my cell phone dicking around or chatting with my friends, then I'm having a good time. 
But if I'm standing there watching everyone in the restaurant, who's going to get up? And and when you finally do get the table, you spend the entire time having people look at you, yeah, and (laughs) waiting for the table. Oh, and last time we were there, some girl like slipped in and took a table because I was turned the wrong direction. I'm like, God damn it, I've been standing here for 10. And I don't want to hate my fellow patrons at the restaurant. But that is what that kind of stuff engenders. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think potential solutions here, and, and you know, not to go completely off the rails here, because you have to imagine these are restaurant people with experience, and sometimes sure. I do have to pull myself back and say, do I really know better than these people? Pro- probably not. No. But it would but. be it would be nice to see some of these things put into place. It's some just, sort of yeah. seating arrangement. Most of the ta- no, all of the tables outside all shared seating, um, big right. picnic benches. In theory, a great idea, right? German beer hall style seating. Yeah. But in practice, people don't really like to sit with people they don't know. Not really. And so those tables end up getting monopolized by fewer people than would occupy that whole table. Therefore, seating runs out really fast. So right. maybe just put some smaller tables. Maybe check out rooftop seating. Is that available? Because that would be pretty cool. It would be great. Because I realize there's a store to the stores on either side, so they can't expand to either side unless one of them shuts down or something. But I, it just drives me crazy every time I go there. The seating is a huge problem. What was the other problem I had? There was some other stubbornness. Thing. Well, they won't serve certain cocktails. They won't customize your food. So we right. already talked about the burger and inability to get ketchup on the burger or fries, but they actually won't customize the burger for you. So if you are allergic to onions, for example, you're kind of out of luck because you can't get the burger without onions. If right. you don't like spinach, same deal. Yes. Uh, they will let you order the doneness of the burger, which I appreciate. Yes. Um, I've never tried to order one well done. I'm kind of curious <laughs> what they would do if you attempted that. <laughs> My guess is they probably wouldn't serve it. But if anybody that's listening has tried to do that, uh, let us know. Uh, yes. Podcast at la-foodie.com. Have you ever tried to order a well done burger at Father's <laughs> office? And what happened? Video and photos, please. Yes. <laughs> hey, just w- one thing about the, uh, the beer, though, is that... Um, you know, in, in Los Angeles, it, it's becoming increasingly, uh, um, you know, it, it's easier now to find places with good beer. But uh, mm-hmm. but for a while, like, uh, Father's Office was, like, one of the only places that had a mm-hmm. huge selection of beer. And so I think that they... Well, hang, hang on. I, I wouldn't call it huge because, like, a place well, like the Yard House, that has a huge selection okay. of beer. Most of them are gross. Most of them have <laughs> dirty lines. Most of them... Well, j- just good, good selection of microbrews they have and a, good selection of, gr- of good beer. Yeah, it's very, yeah, they, very they cultivated have, selection. Like 30, yeah. 30 or 40 beers yeah. on tap. I mean, but they're all a, good. And they're, yeah. and they're all good beers. Yeah. So. But, and while I would agree with you guys uh, in saying that their staff is very knowledgeable, um, w- basically, like, one out of two times, like, half the time I've gone there... And have had questions, and I've wanted to try cool new beers. I'll give a very detailed description of you know what I want. You know, it's like oh uh, well, you know, okay, I, I want uh, you know I want a Belgian beer, but I want to have some hop character. You know, I don't want mm-hmm. it just to be all citrusy or whatever. And then he's like, okay, well, have you ever tried a Chimay or something? It, it, like like they they assume that you have no beer knowledge because most people are going to go in there right. and try to be. I, I just want to find a cool new beer, and half the time it's like. All right, dude. Well, have you have you ever tried Sierra Nevada? Because you look like a total <laughs> idiot. And it's like, okay, just listen to me. All right. So, like, some sometimes their staff can be a little bit impatient, or or it, it's like in one ear out the other. I've never experienced that. But, I mean, that's good to know. I just well, I think I've I think had yeah. Good luck. I think the impatience probably comes from just like I I don't feel like it's and again I've never run a restaurant, never worked at a restaurant, so I don't know. <laughs> But the staffing, like, even because we sat at the bar last time we went, but we couldn't get any real bar service right. because the guy is just standing at the register taking orders That's the right. whole time. Yeah. There's no floating bartender yeah. to handle just the people who are sitting at the bar. Well, and, and, and to be fair uh, with what I just said, um, I mean, I, I mean, I'm being pretty picky just because I love beer so much. And, and, I, and because I, you're an asshole. And I'm a right. asshole. Right. But I have a pretty <laughs> decent knowledge of beer, how it's made, you know, and, uh, and what beers I like. In their defense, they get so many people who are coming in there and be like, can I go to Stella? And you're like, oh, God, we don't have (laughs) Stella. And then they have to just explain to them what they might like that might be in the realm of Stella. So in their defense, I'm sure that they're really sick of, you know, 
trying to describe. Oh, that would beer. drive me nuts. Too, yeah, yeah. Is, so yeah. In, in their defense, like you know, I, I excuse them for that. But uh, I, how often do you think they get the? Well, I like Bud Light. What would you recommend? <laughs> yeah, I would recommend you get the fuck out of here and go do to you, the liquor store. Yeah. Do you guys have any Corona? <laughs> um, yeah, you're really gonna like our uh, you know garlic aioli fries. You know, with your Corona. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. The other stubbornness issue was the food that we actually got when we went there. Oh. Oh, that's right. I we forgot got about the, this. It the was the deconstructed. Daily, it was the daily special. It was the co- the Cobb salad deconstructed. deconstructed. <laughs> yes, which in basically theory, was like was cool idea. Yeah. But in practice, was like, oh well, here are all the elements that you would need to make a salad. Here they are. Make a salad for yourself. <laughs> they should have just given you like tongs and a big bowl. Yeah. <laughs> I would Be- have appreciated. That. I would have that too because what I ended up doing was these two big thick. Romaine wedges. Yes. And then like a cluster of blue cheese, some bacon, some tomato, some bacon, but it was all like right. individual. And then it was like a soft boiled egg. Yes. Uh, which again, I thought was pretty cool because it was really, it was perfectly prepared. Sure. Yes. But what you and I both ended up doing was just sort of cutting everything up into pieces and like mixing it together. I felt like I was preparing food for a child. Yeah. I'm like, well, here you go. Here's a little bite. Here comes the airplane. Like, I don't need to be doing all the work. That's kind of how I feel when I go to fondue restaurants and sure. Korean barbecue restaurants, with a few exceptions. There are exceptions. Where it's like, here's your food. All right, cook it. <laughs> like, well... I pay like five dollars extra to have you guys just do that for me. Cause... That's I think Gin- Gignari down in uh, Culver City actually does that, where do it's kind of you? like they're well, like, do you want us that... to kind of step in and make this happen? Because how are you guys doing here? Yeah, they 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 will That's step good. in. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yes, Father's Office. If you just stop being so stubborn, well, they won't make certain cocktails either. I I've tried to order a martini. Yeah. Good luck with that because they won't serve <laughs> you a martini, which I think is sort of weird. Maybe it's their rejection of the most like hipstery drink that they could think of. They're like, oh no, we're not gonna serve martinis. But they, but they serve will like old school cocktails, yeah, I mean, right? They serve, yeah, like certain types of rye and they'll make you old fashioned sure. and things like that. I just thought it was sort of weird that like, you know, I can see it. I'm looking at it right now. You have vermouth, you have right. gin, you've got <laughs> olives. You know, that'd be really cool if you could just put those in a cup and give that to me. But they yeah, won't do it. Exactly. That's stubbornness as like they they think it's a really like big part of their brand. That they're like, we're small, we're not gonna help you get a seat, we're not gonna serve you what you really want. We're just gonna serve this burger to you, and if you don't like it, get the fuck out. That kind of seems like their basic policy. You do actually have to have a little bit of respect for that, I think. I mean, <laughs> I mean the balls on Sure. Right? Because it's they're sort of saying, like, look, we're awesome, deal with it. And I kind of do. But you know what? I would love it so much more if I just had that fucking light up coaster. That's like, hey, your seat is ready. I'd be like, great, this is the best place ever. So that's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, so moving on to the review. Got our oh little... yes, okay. review time. This week we went to J and J Burger and Barbecue in Culver City. So we're going to talk about the place, the food, the service. We're going to give you a little summary, and we're going to tell you what the L.A. Foodie rating was. And all reviews, including this one, can be found on the L.A. Foodie blog, which is www.la-foodie.com. So let's start with the place. Um, <laughs> do you want to describe the place? Because it's a really weird little yeah, quirky place. It's over. It's on Adams, and uh, it's not the greatest neighborhood. I, I, I is it actually in Culver City? I think it's actually Mid City or something like that. I think that they consider themselves to be Culver City. I don't okay. know if it has a. Culver I mean, they're definitely City address. right there. So it's uh, not. Yeah, it's a Los Angeles address. Okay. Nine double o one six. I think yeah, it's like two City. blocks out of Culver City yeah. or something, but uh-huh. it's right there. But uh, yeah, if you're driving down Adams, you may not notice it because it's kind of this black wrought iron giant fence. And most of it is an enclosure, especially at a certain time of year, you can see the pile of firewood over the fence because right. they have this big lot where they just have a bunch of firewood. Yeah, they sell they, firewood. J&J is right next door to a firewood lot where they cut, cure, and sell firewood. And as far as I know, J&J buys all of their firewood from this oh, yeah. place. Yeah. They, well, I believe they the smoke thing. with hickory. They got to smoke. That's... Yeah. And it, and it shows yeah. that it is really Now, something. there's two there's two halves to J&J. There's the barbecue side yes. and there's the burger side. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's run by husband and wife team. 
and the barbecue side is the husband. It is Louisiana style barbecue, or so he claims. It's she's it's from Southern Oklahoma. Southern. That it's, much I know. It's it, kind she, of a family recipe. That's what I'm my burger? understanding. The barbecue. That's oh, really? What I understood when she, when I was talking to her. Oh, okay. But, uh, All right. So I know, but I do know he's from Louisiana. So maybe okay. it's some sort of weird hybrid of yeah, you know, Oklahoma and. Do they have fried bologna? I know that's an Oklahoma thing. I don't know. I'll have look to at the check burger place next time I go. If they have it there. But the other side is the is the burger side, and mm. uh, the burger side is a permanently parked burger bus truck yes. thing. <laughs> it's the structure that they cook and sell the burgers out of is actually was formerly a lunch cart uh, that they have kind of anchored and built up around and there's corrugated tin awnings mm-hmm. on one side and they, they they're completely separate businesses in the sense that if you buy the barbecue you pay for the barbecue yes. on the barbecue side if you buy the burger if you go to the burger side that's where you pay yes. and then there's common seating areas and the husband will bring you your barbecue yes. and his wife will bring you your burger now for me the burger i thought was pretty good mm-hmm. uh it's not on the best burgers in los angeles which is a post that we published a couple of years ago on la foodie mm-hmm. um I go there for the barbecue. I think it's really outstanding barbecue. Uh, it is. The ribs, especially, and the brisket. Yes. I'm one of these guys that thinks that pulled pork and other pulled meats are a little too easy. Uh, <laughs> so I usually don't try those first, even though they're good. They're just kind of hard to mess up, and so I don't really think that they're much of a barometer for good barbecue. Right. But ribs and brisket definitely are, mm. and completely awesome across the board on mm. uh on all their different styles of ribs. I think they've got a couple different styles short, of ribs. The short end ribs, the top of the menu mm-hmm. item, is just awesome. I mean, we should preface by saying we're actually both from Kansas City. Yeah, yeah, right. So we not only, I mean, we have an appreciation for barbecue and a, and a pretty specific type. Like very, for me, like the sauce is a huge deal. Like, because I think Kansas some City, people, the dry rub is like Kansas a bigger deal, City, but Kansas City. Barbecue is saucy barbecue. Yeah, so saucy the sauce barbecue. is an important element. Yeah. And Damn, I mean that stuff is good. Yeah, you can choose. They have hot at J and J. They've got hot sauce, sauce and mild sauce. Mm-hmm. So you can choose one or the other, or they'll mix or them the together mix, for yeah. you for medium. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he will. He, he'll actually put the sauce on the side. He put the, he sauced everything yeah. on the side for me because I didn't want to try the meat. But t- oh, typically yeah. it is served sauce though. Yeah, that's how I had it last time. And uh, damn, yeah. Now we went uh, on. Saturday. Yeah, you just went a couple yeah, days ago. We just went. You? Yeah, and I wanted to make sure we tried all the. All the sides. Yeah, because they've got some really good soul food type of stuff. They've Mm -hmm. got the Mm -hmm. mac and cheese. They've got the sweet potatoes, I think. They've got... Do they do collard greens there? I didn't see that on there, but I feel like they do, yeah. I don't think I've ever gotten them, though. I haven't either. Uh, We had the beans, the potato salad, and... Oh, man, what else do we have? Well, the beans are awesome. They're they're a little sweet. Barbecue baked beans? Yeah, barbecue baked beans. They're a little sweet. They're great. Macaroni salad we had also. You know, pretty standard. I would recommend getting macaroni salad or potato salad with just because it's kind of like a yogurt at a with an Indian meal. A little cooling effect. A little cooling effect. Yeah, yeah you're kind of like, okay, I need a little break. And it's not even that it's that hot because it really isn't. Even the hot ribs are not really that hot, but if you eat a bunch of them in a row, then you start to feel the heat. Oh, yeah, as you that's get... a, it's a slow burn that builds up yeah. in the background and eventually comes to the foreground for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about the service um, okay. because the service actually is pretty remarkable there just in the sense that they really, really want to take care of you. Oh, sure. Um, I've never been there when it's been overrun with people. It's always been a small crowd. Uh, they definitely take your time, their time with you. Mm-hmm. One of the nice little touches that I love is that his larger smoker is a train. It's like the <laughs> shape of a, <laughs> yes. of a, like a steam engine. Right. Uh, yeah. I don't know why that has anything to do with service, except that I just get a kick out of it every single time. Oh, I it's go cool. Cause you can see it when you go up to order the barbecue, you can right. see the smokers there. When you step up to that counter, the smoke from the smokers is just like comes into your nostrils. You're like, oh man, that's this, one this of my serious right yeah, here. And yeah. that's one of my rules about a barbecue place. And that is, if it doesn't make my mouth water when I'm like a block away, mm-hmm. then it's no good because yeah. that means that there's not you know good smoke billowing out of the stack. So Jim, yeah. you haven't been to J and J, but do you have a favorite barbecue spot in, in LA? Uh, no. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Back to service, they yes. really take care of you. They spend their time with you. He, he was really cool about answering lots of questions, and mm-hmm. so was she. Uh, 
I, I, I kind of feel like I'm family when I'm there and I, I love places like that. You yeah. Know, they, they bring the food out to you when it's ready, check on you, make sure that yeah. you like it. And, and they seem to really genuinely care. It's oh, yeah. not sort of the recited, can I get you anything else? Mm-hmm. How's that for you? I mean, it's like, yeah, how do you like those ribs? Those are yeah. good, right? And you're like, yeah, dude, they're really, really good. Yeah, Thank you yeah, for yeah. No, it, it, it's, yeah, it's really good food and they're just very friendly people. Like it's just, it's, it's, it's pretty great. Yeah. It's, so the, this is one of my very favorite places, uh, for barbecue in all of LA, mm-hmm. um, the Los Angeles foodie rating is five out of five. Oh yeah. Um, not a lot of reviews on the site. Five out of five. This is one of them. Uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Yes. Like Ben said, it's on Adams. The address is 5754 West Adams Boulevard, um, kind of on the edge of Culver City, Med City type of area. Yeah, it, it. You might miss it the first time you go by because it is. It's just. It is like a lot of black metal fencing. Yeah. And but follow your nose because yes. if they're open, you're going to smell the barbecue. For oh yeah, sure. big time. Okay, so the question is: Is it worth a drive? worth a drive absolutely yeah definitely i mean if you this, like good barbecue this place is great um if you're in the neighborhood mm-hmm. obviously you should be going there anyway probably it, it's definitely it's definitely worth driving and if you're not close this is kind of a special occasion type of place yeah um certainly don't wear a tuxedo it's not that kind of special oh, occasion no. but very uh, very casual super super casual and i don't think it's open at night i think it's only during the day right? yeah i don't uh, do i have hours i've got yep uh monday through thursday 10 30 a.m to 7 p.m friday and saturday 10 30 a.m to 9 p.m sunday 11 to 5 they're cash only Yes, they are cash only. Be sure to bring your cash. And it's right off the 10, really. So it's not it's pretty convenient. difficult to get to. No, yeah, no. But. So uh, we're both highly recommending this. Yes. We're saying if you're in the mood for a good barbecue and you're not nearby, make a special trip. Absolutely. So let's move on to uh, best exactly. if used by. Sometimes good things don't last, and some of the best stuff out there in Los Angeles has an expiration date. So this particular one that we're going to start with, um, only good on Tuesdays from 3 to 7. 3 to 7 or 2 to 7? What did we say earlier? I, I, th- I thought it was 2 to 7. All right, maybe it's 2 to 7. We should look we'll that look up. up here right but now. we're talking about the Culver, City's farmers, uh, Culver City Farmer's Market. Um, so it's this is a pretty small market. It's a one block stretch of downtown Culver City on Main Street between Venice and Culver Boulevards. Which happens to be the smallest Main Street in the world. Oh yes, that's true. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. It's only one block. Yeah, it's, it's one yeah. block. It's in the Guinness Book of World Records. It's a true fact because the street name changes when it crosses Venice. Well, there you go. There you go. We all learned something today. Yes, that's beautiful. Uh, it is three to seven. Okay, so, so three p.m., seven p.m. So screw you. <laughs> Yeah, but I came, up with <laughs> but I came up with that Main Street fact, so... That's true, Redemption. Main Street. It's totally redeemed, totally yeah, redeemed. They cancel yeah. each other out, yeah. for sure. <laughs> uh, so, you know, the reason that we wanted to talk about this is it's growing. Um, mm-hmm. this, is a, this is kind of a quaint little farmer's market that over the past couple of years has really grown into kind of a... Uh, it's one of the places where even if you don't live in the neighborhood, you might want to come by and check it out. Now, True. of course, a lot of the same vendors from these other farmer's markets yeah, are there. Yeah. You're going to see a lot of repeats. And as far as I know, I think that maybe Grand Casino, which is a bakery that's mm-hmm. on Main Street, I think they have a presence there. Yeah. Um, I think there's a couple of other local shops that only have a presence there. Yeah. Mostly it's the types of vendors you're going to see, you know, it's your Santa Monica and your Hollywood and your yeah. other farmers. Yeah. You've markets. got the, the French cheese guy. And, right. You know, yeah. Yeah. But uh, what's happened is, is it's sort of spilled over from Main Street into some of the side streets. Um, right. It's kind of running out into Culver Boulevard. Lots of cobbler going on on the side streets. There is a decent amount of cobbler down yes. there. Have you ever tried it? I have. Is it, it, good? it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah it didn't, it. didn't blow me away. I, I, As I understand it, and I haven't been over there, uh, there is some area of town that's having some kind of cobbler thing. The co- Oh, the cobbler renaissance. The cobbler renaissance, yes. the cobbler, Because it, my understanding is it's kind of like... Someone started a cobbler shop, and one woman was like, well, my cobbler's way better than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then 12 other women were like, well, my cobbler is way better than that. So it's just, <laughs> there's a ton of shops. <laughs> so it's a good place to get some cobbler. Some cobbler. what you're saying. You want some cobbler. Seasonal cobbler, too. That was when I was oh, over there. Good. 
the woman was like, oh, yeah, be sure to get this. It's the last white peach we have is white peaches in season or whatever nice. at, at that time. So. That's another thing that I, I like about the Culver City Farmer's Market is that a lot of the restaurants in the downtown Culver City area are really taking advantage of what's offered at that farmer's market. Yeah. Um, I know Bottle Rock, for example, uh, they'll often do a seasonal roast vegetables small plate, which is always awesome. Mm-hmm. I know Ben Ford over at Ford's Filling Station. I see him at the farmer's market almost every Tuesday. He's always walking up and down finding good seasonal ingredients. Mm-hmm. Uh, Akasha Richmond, I think, is, isn't is that her name that runs Akasha? Um, I know yeah. she does the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's living in California has its advantages, and one of them is having access to really great fresh food that's mm-hmm. local kind of all the time. And these restaurants are really taking advantage of that. I'd like to see that in this small community. And it's also really pedestrian friendly. So not oh, yeah. just not just the farmer's market itself, but all of downtown Culver City. So sure. I, I'm sure that a lot of listeners have probably checked out downtown Culver City. It's kind of a trendy growing hip place. Mm-hmm. Um, but come check it out on Tuesdays. Um, Oh yeah, there's yeah, sure. and there's tons of free parking. That's true. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so you I mean yet another reason to just swing on by and check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so another thing that's uh, expiring yes. is one of my favorite seasonal <laughs> products, uh, Passover. Uh, yes. is the year 2011 by our calendar yes. is coming up. And one of the things that comes along with Passover is kosher Coca-Cola. And the difference between regular Coca-Cola and kosher Coca-Cola is that kosher Coca-Cola uses cane sugar instead of high fructose corn syrup. Um, as it's been explained to me, I am not Jewish, but as it's been explained to me, uh, corn is a food that's not eaten during Passover, uh, making it not kosher for Passover making, uh, creating the need for it to be replaced with, uh, with sugar. And you're not going to see it on the label. It'll actually be the same label. It'll still say high fructose corn syrup. The difference is you're going to see, uh, yellow caps on the two liter bottles that either say UOP or CRCP. They're pretty obvious. I mean, they don't look like normal Coke bottle caps and these are only sold in two liters as far as I know. Hmm. Um, but there really is a big difference. And I mean, I think a lot of consumers have spoken. We've seen a couple of the Pepsi throwbacks. Oh, yeah. I think Pepsi itself, oh, that's, great. that's permanent yeah. now. I think they're yeah. actually keeping that as a permanent product. Are they uh, keeping the Dr. Pepper one? Because that one was really tasty. I don't one. know. And I, I know like they, the did the, they did the same thing with Mountain Dew. Yeah. I, the only yeah. one I know for sure that they have announced that they're keeping around is the, the Pepsi. I mean, cola. the best part, clearly, of the Mountain Dew throwback. So, the taste is good, but... Bringing back the hillbilly on the label. Oh, the label's I mean, badass. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, y- you're going to probably have to hunt for this stuff a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to find it in supermarkets, probably. You might find it in ethnic food sections. Um, I can't really give a specific recommendation on where to find it, but if you do find a place that sells it, um, email us podcast at lafoodie.com. Uh, we'd love to know. We'll pass it along on the blog. Uh, I think this is a good thing. You know, I'm not, uh, I don't preach against high fructose corn syrup. I try not to, but, mm-hmm. um, there's clearly a taste difference. I mean, anybody that's had a Mexican Coke versus what you get normally out of the vending machine right. can attest to the fact that it really is, it tastes better. And if you're yeah. a Coca-Cola fan, um, now's the time to to stock up because you're going to see it popping up on store shelves. Right. And so the expiration date on that one, I guess Passover says starts uh, Tuesday, April 19th, right? That's right. And so then, we, you should see it in stores now. Right. And uh, it'll stay in stores through Passover and until they run out of stock. So All keep right. your eyes peeled. Cool. Thanks for listening to LA Foodie. You can always reach us via email at podcast at la-foodie.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash LA Foodie, and on Twitter at LA Foodie. Please like, comment, share, and retweet. And, and uh, thanks to our, our guest. Yeah, thanks to our guest, Jim Callahan, um, also known as Jimmy Callahan. You got anything to plug, Jim? Um, it, well, my, uh, my brother and, I and uh, some friends are working on a bunch of sketches, so we're going to have those up on, uh, on the YouTube and, uh, and various other county websites. But YouTube page is uh, backslash Jimmy Callahan, and uh, you can check out some of my other stuff uh, at jimmycallahan.com. Thanks so much for stopping by, Jim. We appreciate it. Very much so. Uh, and as blog commenter Adele always says... I love Steak Corral's Reby. Mmm, it's awesome.